Last time I talked to you, I talked to you about something I think is quite important. Um, I want to revisit it this morning out of 1 John chapter 1, if you'd like to track with me. I am um, not promoting the movie Risen because we only saw half of it because the whole theater shut down because of technical difficulties. So we got to... But in, in the... In the in the theme of the movie, and I won't go there, it was quite obvious at this point, I haven't seen the whole movie yet, but it was quite obvious, and it is sometimes oblivious to most of the Christian church who Jesus really is. Now, they offer him as Messiah. I want to tell you something very clearly. Jesus has not come as Messiah yet. You must really hear me. Because the Messiah is divine ruler in the earth. He is not in Jerusalem. Would you agree with that? He is the promised divine ruler of the earth. He didn't come as Messiah. He is the promised Messiah. But he confounded the Jews when he came as a suffering servant. I said he confounded the Jews when he came as as Messias. I mean, look at the Greek word. It doesn't say Messiah. It says Messias. He came as a suffering servant, not as the ruling king. He was called king of the Jews. When he comes, he's not king of the Jews. Now, I want you to really listen to me. Because these are trying times of the, of the mismatch of misrepresenting the Godhead. When he comes, he won't be coming as king of the Jews. He'll be coming as king of all the earth. Y'all just, do you, are you tracking with me? Is that true or not? Now, he's just coming to rule out of Jerusalem for Jewish people, right? But this is how it gets, this is how we get thrown into the Christianese mysterious mysteries of superstition. And you need to know who Jesus is. And who he was before he came. And who he was before he came. It is not well known, even in Christianity, that Jesus is a God of Israel that came in the flesh. Could I say to you in the, Jude in the Jewish idiom, he is Yahweh that came as Yeshua. Are you tracking with me? It was not Adonai that came in the flesh. It was not Adonai. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. God, that God there is Adonai. So in the beginning was the word who was Yahweh. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh. I'm quoting you from John chapter 1. If you want to read it. You need to get this under your belt because there's a lot of people coming that are going to try to reduce Jesus to something other than he is to prepare the way for the false Antichrist. I mean, the false Christ, excuse me, the Antichrist, which is a false Christ. And even the Jews will be deceived. Even the nation of Israel will be deceived when someone comes offering themselves as the promised Messiah. And they'll accept it. Will you accept it? If you don't know the Bible and you don't understand what I'm saying, then your children, you and your children, your children's children, could fall into the same deception. I know this is probably a little deep for you, but it's time. That you know who God, the Godhead is. I was at my son's house in Seattle and I'll just tell you, I've got the copy of the literature that uh, they passed out at the door from the Mormon church. And I, I scanned the first few pages, and I was shocked at what they're asking people to believe about Jesus and about you. Absolutely horrendous, unbiblical, 
all based on newer writings. Why would you believe on newer writings when the older writings were authenticated by the apostles and by God? Why would you want new writings for? New writings, that they're from God, will not overthrow the ancient writings of the prophets. Mark it down. I'll keep up knocking on your door. If it's different than what your Bible says, it's not of God. Which is older, the false religions or Christianity and the prophets in Judaism? Do you know who's older? What's older? Who's older? I mean, Muhammad didn't even have his beginning until, what was it, uh, 1200? A.D.? That's, uh, that's the Dark Ages. Middle Ages, Dark Ages. I want to read to you again in 1 John. I'm not in St. John this time. I'm in 1 John. Now, I would think the writings of John would be important for us to key into. Not that the other that wrote weren't inspired, not, not saying that, but this is the disciple that Jesus loved. Do you remember that scripture about John, one of the twelve, that this was a disciple that Jesus loved? This was Jesus' best friend. And it was that man, John, at the end of his life, when he thought it was over, was entrusted with a book of Revelation. So I think if the Father and Jesus the Word would entrust John with this type of incredible revelation about the future, which you'll find yourself in Revelation, that we perhaps need to say, Maybe he knew what he was talking about. Perhaps. Well, I believe he knew what he was talking about. Because what he's talking about can be substantiated by Scripture. Old Testament Scripture. Let's read in John chapter 1, verse 1 again. That which was from the beginning. Now, I took you here two weeks ago, or whatever it was, three weeks ago. That which was from the beginning. Remember I went in the beginning? In the beginning? I went all the way back to Genesis in the beginning. And I went into Isaiah in the beginning. If you weren't here, and I, I'm just giving you a book report. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. So what John is saying, that one that was in the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, go back to John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. It was that Word that said, let there be light in Genesis. It was that Word that said, let there be light, and there was. It was that Word that said in, in the book of beginnings, in the Torah, the book of beginnings, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. It was that Word that said in the beginning, let us create man in our image. Who was that speaking? People will say, well, that was God the Father. They don't know the God of the Old Testament. Because they haven't read John chapter 1, they haven't read Colossians chapter 1, and they haven't read Hebrews chapter 1, apparently, which state very clearly, I'm not going to do your homework for you, but you better write this down, that you can go back and read Colossians chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 1 and John chapter 1, that the Father created everything visible and invisible through the word Jesus Christ by the spoken word. Who is the creator? The Father, ultimately, by his will, but it was the word who spoke it, and the Holy Spirit that made it happen. That is the Godhead working together as a plural unity. You need to know there is no mystery in the Godhead. You get around these people say, well, the Godhead's a mystery. Really? Then why did Jesus come to show us the Father? That's mysterious? It's pretty plain. If Jesus came to show us the Father, then we got the Father, we got the Word who came in the flesh, and we got the Holy Spirit. This is certainly not a mystery, is it? Are you in relationship with a mystery, or are you in relationship with the personage of the Godhead? 
I'm asking a very direct question. Who are you in? Well, I, I'm, just, I just, I'm just in relationship with Jesus. Really? Why would you just be in relationship with Jesus? I think the Father's a little bit bored. It kind of misses you. If Jesus came to show us the Father, if Jesus said in John 16, that in that day you shall ask me nothing, but you shall ask the Father in my name, and he the Father shall give to you whatsoever you ask, don't you think it's important you know the Father too? And who was Jesus praying to when he prayed? Our Father. When we read these scriptures, do we read them like we drive the interstate? Or do we stop and our students of what God is really saying, that we are having assurance of what we believe, not the superstition of the idioms of Christianese Christianity. And it's multifaceted denominational breakdowns. You've got a denomination in America for every shade of doctrine that ever existed. And the perversion of such. Or the inclusion of such. You ought to be concerned what you believe. Know it for yourself, not because you heard it, not because somebody told you, not because you read a book, because you saw a movie, not because, not because, not because you heard a sermon, not because, because you went to a Bible study. Do you know it for yourself in the Word? Can you find it? Can you give reason to others for what you believe, what you believe? How can you be a disciple and don't know what a disciple is supposed to do? The disciples of Jesus remembered what he said, and they wrote it down. They remembered the teachings of Jesus, and they wrote, and they wrote it down. You can't be a disciple of the Godhead and not know how they think. Because you're a Christian doesn't mean you know anything. Come on, if you can't say amen to that, just say ouch. Have some fun with me, you know? Do you know why you believe what you believe? And can you prove it? The Mormon church says that Jesus is the half-brother of Lucifer. Do you really believe that? Can you disprove it? Or you just know it doesn't, doesn't feel good when you heard it? That's not disproving it. Can you go to the Word and prove that the Father through Jesus created Lucifer? Can you find that one? Do you know where to find it? Do you know what part of your Bible to go look? So when they come knocking on your door, say, excuse me? Jesus is the second member of the Godhead, Yahweh, that came in the flesh. The Father of all spirits created all things through Yahweh including Lucifer. So how could Lucifer be the half-brother of his creator? Come on now, are you into apologetics? I'm giving you something to think about in apologetics. What's apologetics? The defense of the faith. So when they come knocking on your door and give you this garbage, asking you to believe a false prophet, Joseph Smith, who is a false prophet, because none of the things that he prophesied ever came to pass. And the Bible says this, if anybody says something about the future and it doesn't come to pass, you're not to fear them. But so many people are taken captive by these heretics because they don't know their Bible for themselves. I'm concerned. And would you expect me to be concerned? We've come here for many reasons. To worship, to be instructed in God's ways, his mind, to prepare for eternity, eternal life, to be renewed, to be transformed, to be reformed, to have fellowship, to worship, to praise, to give testimony, to let the gifts flow. All these things should be happening in corporate assembly, but not in superstition. Not in feel good. Well, it sure felt good to be in church today. I went to a really good barbecue restaurant, and it really felt good, but it wasn't church. So you don't go by your feelings. 
However, the Holy Spirit will bear witness of something. So, here in 1 John, it says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. So what John is saying, that one that said, let there be light, that one that was there in the beginning, we heard him speak to us. We heard him speak to us. How could he speak to us? He had come in the flesh. He had become one of us. Son of God, son of man. Seed of David. Son of God, seed of David. It says, we have heard that which we have seen with our eyes. Do you know if if Jesus walked in here right now, that he'd be the same one that said, let us create man in our own image? He'd be the same one that said, let there be light? Are you prepared to meet that one? Are you prepared for that one to walk in here? Or is he just a good buddy from Christianity, the dreamy eyes and long hair that doesn't tell the truth because he might offend somebody? Are you prepared? Do you really know who came and saved you? Do we really have that knowledge that he that he that is the one that died for your sins is the one who created you according to the will of the Father? This is bigger than big. And he's the one that you'll be married to as you come through the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's that one you will serve as kings and priests. It is that one there that will be Messiah, divine ruler in the earth, and you will rule with him. Revelation chapter 5. Your heart must burn within you always that this is more than just a Christian experience or everyone else is wrong and you're right. This must be a relationship that you apprehend moment by moment. Even your very breath that you breathe is his mercy. His mercy. And his mercy endures forever. I know who Jesus is. I know. I know what's happening in the future. Do you? That's why some of our teachings here are designed to position you. So I just want to come and come and do what? I want you to have truth. The reason for it is this. If you can't have truth from the word, you're not going to have proper faith. Because faith comes by hearing And hearing by what? Denominational catechism. The teachings of the cemeteries of learning. Faith comes by hearing. But you've got to watch watch out for Bible translators because they're changing truth as fast as they can print the page. They don't like it, they change it. Well, this is what they really meant. Well, how do you know? You weren't there, what they really meant. Well, in a... I come up against a Hebrew scholar years ago. We butted heads just as hard as you can imagine. Because I would take a scripture out of the Hebrew scriptures and say, this is what it means. He said, it doesn't mean that. I said, well, it said this. What did it mean that? I said, what's it mean? He said, you can understand the meaning by taking every word and breaking it down and knowing the meaning. I see. You don't, so I can't talk to you in a sentence structure? I asked him, I mean, so I'm I'm going to try to explain to you that the sky is blue today and the sun is shining. So I'm just going to come up to you and say, blue. I study blue, 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 spectrum of the color, blue, blue. What's that got to do with sky? Well, unless you understand blue, you can never understand sky. Yeah, I can. I can look up and see the sky and tell you what it looks like. That's harmony. That's context. God wants you to have information for your journey. And we come into these settings here Fridays and Sundays as, as just absolutely it's a thrill to be here. 
It's a thrill to come together and be able to learn and be able to worship and be able to be with each other and be able to bear each other's burdens. Let the Holy Spirit come representing the Father and the Word in our midst, not just the assembly of the chair sitters or the pew sitters. Pew. We've come to be real because guess who else is real? God, the Godhead's real. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be married to a superstition one day. A superstition didn't save me and die for me. John is talking about that they encountered the God of Israel. The movie that we went to see if it was biblical or not called Risen, we didn't get through it. And Donna said, wait till we see the end of the movie because we got, had to leave. I told him that. One of the Roman guy was calling out to, in his superstition, was calling out to Yahweh. And then he knew this Jesus that he was trying to find the, the body as Yeshua. And I thought to myself, I wonder, I wonder what he would think if he knew that Yeshua was Yahweh. I wonder if the movie's going to come across with that. We're going to go back and find out if it ended that way. Because what a, what a horrible thing to watch a movie offering Yahweh as by name and, and offering Yeshua by name and not knowing they're the same person. That is darkness. That is ultimate darkness. Not knowing who Jesus was before he came. Not knowing which member of the Godhead. 